Greetings to you all. I'm Derek Korn, Senior Editor of Modern Machine Shop Magazine. Thanks for attending today's webinar, sponsored by Gibbs & Associates, a Simitron company. The topic of today's webinar is high-speed machining. We'll look at how proven high-speed machining CAM strategies, technologies, and methodologies working together can have a significant impact on a shop's profitability and bottom line. Our presenter from Gibbs is John Sayre. After 16 years in the machining trade, John's career sidestepped into machine tool applications, and he now specializes in CAD CAM distribution and application support. He's worked with many of the top CAM providers, and his 11 years of international service with Gibbs & Associates has given him broad insight into a wide range of manufacturing sectors, technologies, and applications. Now let's get started. John, please take it away. Thank you very much. On June 11, 1927, Charles Lindbergh crossed the Atlantic in his custom-built plane, the Spirit of St. Louis. The craft was stripped, stripped to the bare bones and modified to carry 425 gallons of fuel, enough for his nonstop journey. He flew 34 hours and covered 3,610 miles. Thus, he used 0.11 gallons of fuel per mile, or 8.49 miles per gallon. Debuting in 1969, the Concorde could take 100 passengers across the Atlantic in two hours, consuming six gallons of fuel per mile, or 6,407 gallons per hour. The Boeing 747-400 series can carry 467 people across the Atlantic in about six hours at 646 miles per hour, burning five gallons of fuel per mile. The 747 family has carried half the world's population, 42 billion nautical miles. Now, the Airbus 380 holds the record as the largest airliner in the world with capacity to carry 850 passengers halfway around the globe while consuming 10 gallons of fuel per mile. It, too, can cross the Atlantic in about six hours despite its size. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to today's Modern Machine Shop webinar on how high-speed machining can change your bottom line, presented to you by Gibbs & Associates. You've just seen four approaches to solving the same problem, how the demands of the market have changed and how one industry has changed to meet these demands. What role will technology play as the demands of your market increase and your shop floor evolves to meet the challenges of the future? It doesn't matter which industry you're in, really. Survival depends on understanding profit and loss. Embracing new ideas and technologies gives us the competitive edge. Underestimating our weaknesses can be fatal. Change is a constant factor, so is the need to improve our processes and the product. When faced with a challenge, we better see it coming and fire, find a way to overcome it. In the airline industry, profitability is measured by equipment uptime passenger seat cost per mile, industry compliance, reduced costs and overhead. Your profitability is measured by machine uptime, material removal rate, part compliance, reduced costs and overhead. Machine uptime through things like machine simulation, Material removal rate, tools like volume mill for Gibbs Cam or Gibbs Cam plunge roughing. Of course, part compliance, machining directly from native CAD models to reduce programming errors and speed up productivity. And of course, reduced costs and overhead, such as increased tool life, reduced machine costs, increased return on investment on your machines, and reduced labor costs. Today we're going to focus on these two key areas that can optimize your productivity and profitability. So some of the topics we're going to discuss today are what is high-speed machining or HSM? So if you hear me refer to HSM, that is high-speed machining. The factors contributing to optimized high-speed machining results. Why is high-speed machining so important to today's manufacturing environment? What elements actually comprise high-speed machining? 
high-speed machining tools, technologies, and methods, part configurations, and selecting a suitable machining approach, examples of high-speed machining part programming, and high-speed machining's impact on your cost reduction. In this webinar, we're going to examine this concept on a slightly broader level and look at the bigger picture. Traditionally, the description of high-speed machining relates to getting an end mill or a similar cutting tool to feed as quickly as possible while maintaining efficiency, accuracy, and tool life. The relationship between feed rate, material type, cutter configuration, and spindle speed are highly associative and more critical. And if we look at this diagram, we see three areas called the primary deformation zone, the tertiary deformation zone, and the secondary deformation zone. These are three key areas, and what we want to try to do for high-speed machining is make these areas of contact as narrow as possible. This reduces the heat that's actually transferred to the part, and it also reduces the wear on the cutting tool. So this leads us to the question, is speed the only answer? Let's talk a little bit about some of the factors affecting high-speed machining results. Delegation of workpiece to the most effective machine tools. As far as optimal work holding, we want to use the appropriate type of work holder. We want the tool holder to suit the application. We want it to be as short and as accurate as possible. A run out of as little as 0 .0005 or 5 ten thousandths of an inch can actually change the, the radial feed rate and have it vary per revolution up to 50%. Tooling tool holders. And finally, CAM programming. CAM programming involves using the most versatile and adaptive toolpath possible, toolpath optimization, and high metal removal rates. So why is high-speed machining so important to today's shop? Well, quite simply, your machine throughput defines your shop's productivity. Increasing throughput is always feasible, however, Buying more machines isn't always an option. As you can see by this crowded shop floor, we'd be pretty hard pressed to put another machine in there. With slim margins in a competitive industry, increasing profit means survival. And your customers are always seeking reductions in component costs on your quotations. Your peripheral and operating costs are increasing on a day-to-day -day basis. So what elements comprise high-speed machining? Well, we'll start with comparative feed rate. Volume removal rate, this is how fast you're actually removing the material. Toolpath control and versatility. Surface finishing quality. Reduction in hand finishing. Reducing added process time. Accuracy and conformance. And all of these elements factor together to define how efficient a high-speed machining process or your high-speed machining actually is. And you can see some of these aren't directly related, but they are indirectly related to your productivity. We're going to talk a little bit now about high-speed machining tools, technologies, and methods. And we're going to start out with volume mill for Gibbs Cam. Volume mill, quite simply, is a performance enhancement for Gibbs Cam. It's a toolpath optimization engine geared towards maximum material removal rate. Its primary focus is optimized area clearance. Its objectives are balanced high volume material removal rate, optimizing your tool life, and fully exploiting your machine tools capabilities. Look at it like bolting a supercharger on a Corvette. So here we have a nice shiny new blue Corvette at our supercharger, and the equation is Corvette plus supercharger results in excessive speed. So introducing high-speed machining technology to your shop is easier than you'd think. There's really no additional tools required. It installs in seconds. It's totally integrated. Cycle time reductions of 40 to 60 percent are common. It's got a very low cost of implementation, and there's no added skills required. You're going to increase your profitability dramatically. 
you're probably asking yourself, your toolpath seems fine. How can it really be any better? So let's discuss some factors that indicate that there could be room for improvement in your CNC milling processes. Five signs that your toolpath strategy has room for improvement are premature tool wear, limited tool life, and tool breakage, vibration or inconsistent sounds when the tool enters a cut, goes around corners, or changes direction, the need for increased rigidity and fixturing or part shifting. So if you're constantly finding you're shifting offsets, you know, over tightening your vise, or having to reinforce things, then that probably indicates you might want to have a closer look at the way you're actually cutting the part. Spiral swirling on wall finishes or spiral stepping on floor finishes. And finally, of course, the, the urge to have a nap while you're watching the tools cut. That's usually a strong indicator. I'm going to talk a little bit about conventional tool path calculations. And you can see by this diagram, traditionally, area removal tool paths are calculated by working from a given shape, as we can see here, and calculating the offsets inside out or outside in. So you can see we've taken this pocket shape and we've basically offset it and offset it and offset it until we reach the center. This has been the industry standard for years and is the approach commonly applied by most tool paths of this type by most CAM systems on the market today. It gets the job done and it does allow for a lot of versatility in tool application. You know, you can go with different size end mills, um, you know, to get into your corners and things like that. It's been a good solution for most applications but it does present some challenges. So let's talk a little bit about the challenges presented by offset toolpath. Sharp corners and radical directional changes, as you can see indicated by the arrow, increase your tool loading. So every time we hit one of those acute corners, our tool loading goes way up. Moving between cuts increases your tool loading. So you can see there, every time we step out, once again, we're increasing that radial tool loading. Tool performance is limited by the overloading in the red areas. So everywhere you see red there, that's your, that's your cap on your feed rate. Cut depth, RPM, and feeds need to be reduced to survive the red areas. And that means that the material removal rate in gray areas becomes limited by the red areas. The result is a compromise in cutting parameters for the entire operation to ensure cutter survival and, of course, a reasonable lifespan of your tools. So let's take a sneak peek into the world of optimized material removal. You can see here we've got some nice hot chips coming off this block. Talk a little about Gibbs Cam Volume Mill. Volume mill provides consistent radial feed rates. As we could see from the previous diagrams, what we want is consistency on those radial feed rates. It optimizes your tool contact. The more our tool is actually in contact with the work, the more productive we are. A tool cutting error is a tool that's not making you any money. And as they say, the most expensive material to cut is air. Ease of programming. We want our high-speed machining processes to be very easy to program. If they tend to be too difficult, we might not try new things. And of course, total integration. We want these capabilities integrated into everything we do. Now, volume mill can be combined with Gibbs Cam's plunge roughing. So volume mill's benefits are maximized by the ability to work together with Gibbs Cam plunge roughing. The processes can be programmed together interactively with the ability for volume mill to work from remaining stop condition. So that means that if we were to plunge rough and volume mill were to come back and finish off, it would know where the material is. High pressure through the spindle cooling options further enhance both volume mill and plunge roughing results, supporting ultra-aggressive feed rates, excellent ship evacuation, and unparalleled tool life. There's a lot of different solutions on the market for this today. And um, these are things more and more that are being incorporated into these high-speed machining toolpaths. Volume mill, plunge roughing, and Gibbs Cam's advanced 3D cutting options combined to provide a cost-effective and versatile high-speed machine solution. I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the specific strengths of plunge roughing. 
One of those strengths, and probably the most important one, is the fact that cutting force is absorbed vertically through the z-axis of the machine, eliminating radial pressure on the part. In most con uh, machine configurations, the most rigid axis is coming directly up that z-axis. High-tech plunging insert tools allow for rapid material removal rates and extended tool life because we can get the, the coolant right into the tip of that tool or in a lot of cases right into the flutes. Gibbs Cam's intelligent plunging retracts away from vertical walls as it comes back to reduce the tool wear and vibration maximizing tool life. Optimization of plunge point travel, that's the actual path of the plunge points, further optimizes the process and reduces plunge roughing cycle times. Plunge roughing efficiency is not limited by confined areas and can be maximized by applying more than one size of plunging tool if required. So if we've got a configuration that primarily has one inch radiuses but there's a couple of areas where you might have a 750 or 0.5, then you can just switch tools and, and run a second or third operation quite easily. Plunge roughing is fully supported in Gibbs Cam's 5-axis option for ultra-efficient roughing of complex shapes. And you can see here by these diagrams, and you can also see by the cut part rendering, because we're able to plunge rough perpendicular or normal to the surface, that means the remaining cusp pipe is very, very small. Now we're going to talk about something called 3-5-axis to five axis morphing. 3 to 5 axis morphing is the ability to transform 3 axis toolpath to 5 axis toolpath on the fly. And what we mean by on the fly is in a single process rather than uh, programming multiple processes. Advanced settings allow a user to easily define the tool axis control using a number of preset options, which once again lends itself to ease of programming. You can see here we can be tilted relative to the cutting direction, tilted with the angle, tilted with fixed angle to axis, rotated around axis, and several other different options. And once we select one of those options, all of the other parameters are preset. The comprehensive gouge check feature eliminates the potential for collisions before they occur at the machine. If we can eliminate a collision before we actually see it on the machine, of course, we're not only going to save cycle time in changing tools, but we're going to save the potential to actually crash a machine and cause damage. So you can see here, we can select multiple gouge check options, and inside those options we have the ability to check flute, shaft, holder front, holder back, and we have a number of different ways of doing that, such as tilting tool away with maximum angle, that sort of thing. We can use one of these or more of these and we can combine them. Advanced parameters allow a user to fine tune gouge checking and rapid and positioning moves as well as your cutting moves. So we can actually gouge check our links, look for remaining collisions, and also miscellaneous options such as check gouge between positions, extend tool to infinity, and of course check tip radius. Now we're going to take a, a little bit of look of at how that actually plays into cutting a part um, on cut part rendering. And you can see as we're starting to cut this part that the tool is more or less perpendicular to the table of the machine. <clears throat> so almost at a zero angle. We call it a shallow angle. As we move down, you can see that angle actually starts to increase. And that allows us a little more room for that tool holder so the tool holder doesn't interact with the work. And Tool holders interacting with the work is probably not a good thing. As we reach the bottom of the part, you can see we've achieved what's called our maximum angle, and now we've got the maximum clearance for that tool holder. This is very important because now we can actually use the shortest tool possible, and the shortest tool possible has the least amount of deflection, the least amount of vibration, and can run as quickly as possible. Now we're going to talk a little bit about toolpath control and versatility. In 3D multi-surface toolpath, two of the biggest factors that determine success in high-speed machining are control, versatility, and the priorities for optimized toolpath are keeping the tool on the workpiece as much as possible, 
eliminating radical entry and exits in sharp corners, maintaining a balanced chip load on both radial and vertical cutting depths, consistency in cutting conditions, eliminating as much air cutting as possible, smooth stepovers and transitions in all axes, so not just on an XY planer, but also in three axes or five axes. Entry, exit, and step over control are a very, very key element in this equation. By eliminating radical movements from toolpath calculations, it's one of the key elements in efficient high-speed machining results and extending your tool life. The ability to accomplish this by selecting and setting high-speed machining cutting parameters makes high-speed machining programming no more difficult, really, than standard programming. So you can see here, we have the ability through radio buttons and text boxes or dialogues to control our entry style, exit style, entry-exit trimming style, and our retract style. So if we take a close-up view of the generated toolpath, that shows entry-exit and retract moves are smooth, they're minimized where possible, and they keep the tool on the work. So we'll just take the part away from this for a moment, and you can actually see that in a translucent way. And what you don't notice here is things like sharp corners. You see a lot of radiuses. The generated toolpath even looks fast. It looks smooth and it looks efficient before we even run the tool. A tool running conventional toolpath can be compared kind of like a New York taxi cab ride. You feel all the sharp turns and corners. You hear a wide variety of unusual sounds. And the trip might not be as fast as you'd like it to be. On the contrary, a tool running high-speed machining toolpath is more like riding around the track in a high-tech Formula One racing car. What you feel is g-force, what you hear is optimized speed and performance, and before you know it, you've completed several laps. If you notice that racetrack look very much like our high-speed machining toolpath did. I'm going to talk a little bit now about part configuration and selecting the most efficient machining approach. So let's look at three axis. One of the pros of working in three axis is, is rigidity, but one of the cons is axis can be limited, meaning that your tool holder and other considerations, your headstock, because you can only approach the part one way, means you might have to use longer tools or actually move the part physically. 2.5 to 3 axis high volume rate removal. Now some of the pros to this are that it's definitely very, very fast. One of the cons are that it's not as efficient on very, very tight areas such as slots. Plunge roughing. The pros to plunge roughing are that it's excellent for slots, it's great for confined areas, and it's particularly applicable to machining hard materials because once again we can use that z-axis of the machine and we can use some very, very specific cutting inserts. 3 plus 2 axis. One of the pros is reduced part handling and we can machine 4 and 5 sides in one setup. But the con of that is that we tend to have a limited envelope on machines with these capabilities just because they have to support that 4 and 5 axis capability. We looked earlier at the three axis morphed to five axis. One of the pros to that is that you can use the shortest tool and holder configurations possible. And another pro is because of that you can use increased feed rates. A consideration you have to make, however, is that it does require some specific cam support. Multitasking machining. Now, there's many multitasking machines out there today that can support both three axis multi-surface machining as well as three to five axis positioning and simultaneous machining. So more and more we're seeing a trend towards people with these machines wanting to incorporate high speed machining technology. Some of the pros to that are, of course, what the industry calls done in one capabilities. That's the ability to put a part on the machine, apply all of the machining strategies, whether it's turning, milling, three axis, five axis, hole making, whatever the case may be, in one operation. So we're done in one. It's good for addressing very complex mill turn parts on a single machine. But once again, one of the considerations, the important consideration is that these machines do require specific cam support 
and they also require specific post-processor support, so you need to make sure that your CAM system, as well as the post-processors, will support this type of dynamic high-speed machining that's incorporated with multitasking. Five axis. Uh, we are seeing in the industry today a, a very, very large move towards high-speed machining on five-axis machines. Some of the pros are that they can address complex milling configurations. Another pro is that it often reduces finishing time on 3D parts. Where we used to finish some of these parts in 3D, now we're finishing them in five-axis. And the reason being is that, once again, the cusp height is smaller, and thus we can reduce some finishing time on that part. However, once again, a big consideration is that it requires a higher level of skill in the programmer and even the operators, and it does require more training. One of the cons of this is that some machines have limited high-speed machine capabilities in simultaneous 5-axis. So although you do have the capability of machine in 5-axis, when you're actually traveling in those modes, the feed rate itself has a cap. Another consideration here is that, of course, with 5-axis, your CAM system really does need to have the ability to support high-speed machining in 5-axis. And then there's combinations of all of the above. So we can take you know, a number of these different strategies and combine them together. And you know, this is something that you will want to make sure that your CAM system can support. So high-speed machining's impact on cost reduction relates to productivity and efficiency meaning the output or the maximum output with lowest costs, make more parts in less time, and that gives you the most profitability. It's quite a simple equation. Profitability is getting the maximum return from your capital investments and high dollar consumables. Your machine tools and your facility are your highest cost overhead. Labor costs to support each hour your facility is operational are a significant overhead. Perishable cutting tools are one of your greatest consumable expenses. So the bottom line is that you incur costs for every hour you own a machine and every cutting tool you buy, yet the lifespan of most cutting tools ends prematurely due to abnormal wear and a small percentage of the effect of cutting edge or damage other than wear resulting from abuse, such as chipping, pitting, and burning. And in all actuality, you're CNC machines, on average, operate at about 50% of their troop capacity, and that's during their uptime. I'm going to have a little bit of a look at end mill wear conditions now. And you can see by the yellow arrow something we call localized depth of cut wear. Now, this wear actually coincides exactly with the depth of cut that was used for this tool over a number of parts. And what that means is that we've got, let's say, one-fifth or one-tenth of the tool used, and we almost throw away the other nine-tenths of the tool. Then we have something called catastrophic shock wear. This is caused by vibration, chatter, or packing, and this actually does break down the edge of the tool. Rather than a wear, it actually results in a chip. And then finally, this is what we want to see, and this is typical normal wear. So what we want is we want consistent wear from the tip of that flute all the way up to the shank. And that means we're getting the optimal cutting efficiency out of that tool. So in a perfect machining world, machining should be consistent, uninterrupted, and vibration free. The entire cutting edge of a tool or insert should be utilized. Both machine tool and cutting tool technology should be operating at maximum efficiency. I'm going to take a look now at some return on investment studies. Um, so these are some real world examples of high speed machining tool path performance results. Let's look at how shops just like yours are benefiting from high speed machining technology. McMillan machine working in titanium using a half inch five flute end mill. So before high speed machining, if we look at some of the key factors, we have a cycle time on this part of 80 minutes, parts per tool of four, and CIM MRR, which stands for cubic inch per minute metal removal rate of 0.433. When we compare that to after, our cycle time in this particular instance was reduced to 30 minutes, parts per tool to 40, 10 times, and the cubic inch material removal rate up from 0.433 to 
some of the comments were that the results were so dramatic that one order paid for the software and it's been all profit after that. Or common sense tells me it's saving wear and tear on my machines. This is something we hear quite often is it's one thing to reduce the cycle time on the machines, but what if we can actually get more life out of those machines and less maintenance, more accuracy? It did more than I expected it would do. Another company, Performance Tool and Die, working in A2 tool steel before high-speed machining, inch per minute feed rates of 35 to 30 inches a minute with a cycle time on this part of 22 minutes 36 seconds. After high-speed machining, they've got an inch per minute feed rate of 200 inches a minute with a cycle time of 7 minutes 20 seconds. Dramatic reduction. We realized a 208 percent increase in productivity. It's paid for itself in no time. The benefits exceeded our expectations. Optimum manufacturing on Inconel, a very, very tough high temperature material, 375, uh, 0.375 uh, four fluid end mill. Working at a cycle time initially of 40 minutes per part, parts per tool one, with a cubic inch metal removal rate of 0 0.01. We look at the after, our cycle time is reduced to 17 minutes. Parts per tool, two. Doesn't seem like a big jump, but we're talking 100% there. The big one is the cubic inch metal removal rate, 0 0.12 versus 0 0.01. The new tool path removes the material much faster while putting far less stress on our cutters and machines. So here again, we see that consistent complement that the machines themselves are actually wearing better. Not only is the cycle time dramatically shorter, but the extended tool life is impressive. Management was easily convinced with such a quick return on investment. So how are customers using GibbsCam high-speed machining achieving these results? Well, they've experienced an instant gain of 30 to 60 percent in productivity. They benefited from an increased tool life of 50 percent or more. They saw an immediate return on investment. Because if a tool path contains bottlenecks, it's really only as fast as those weakest links. It sounds complex, but the principle is actually quite simple. High-speed machining creates a more uniform tool path that allows a cutting tool to maintain optimal cutting conditions on its depth of cut and on its radial end feeds. And you can see if we look at this tool path once again, it resembles that Formula One racetrack we looked at earlier. There's no new skills or retraining required. So once again, ease of implementation. You're using the same post processors and there's no post editing involved. And the savings begin on the first job you program. So in conclusion, programming high speed machine toolpath is no more difficult than normal CAM programming is and it can actually be faster. Let the CAM software do all the complex work for you. High speed machining tools like volume mill, plunge roughing, and five axis morphing are totally integrated with Gibbs CAM using the same menus, the same interface, and they conform with the entire GibbsCAM programming flow. This is a, you know, one of the typical dialogues, and it's identical to all the other dialogues within the system. High-speed machining can support wireframe and solid models. So anytime we save importing wireframe or importing solid models, this time, once again, we save programming the part. These tools can be combined to optimize your part production and your quality. GibbsCAM high-speed machining is a totally integrated solution. It supports mill, mill turn, and multitasking machines. It's totally integrated with GibbsCAM machine simulation to further reduce the machine downtime and inc increase your productivity and your profitability. If we can actually test out these high-speed cuts on the computer rather than on the machine, we're saving machine downtime. And of course, when we're testing out a high-speed machining toolpath, because of the feed rates that we're traveling and the rapids that we're traveling at, we want to try to do everything we can to eliminate the potential for collision. There's no special post processors or post editing. And now we're going to talk about some ideal applications for high-speed machining. Aerospace, automotive, defense, medical, electronics, prototyping, and energy. So it's not limited to this, but these are a lot of the key applications that we see end users getting the best results from the high-speed machining technologies. So that's the end of our presentation for today, but hopefully it's the beginning of a new outlook on more efficient material removal for your shop. 
you've seen what high speed machining can do and you've seen what it has done for some of our other customers so let's start saving today you can contact us at www.gibscam.com for a no obligation high speed machining application review I'd like to thank you all for your valuable time